This video is about jet streams. The jet stream is a fast moving ribbon of winds at high altitudes in the atmosphere. Wind speeds can reach 200 miles per hour. To qualify as a jet stream, winds must exceed 60 knots. As it meanders around the globe, the jet stream aids the exchange of cold air from the poles and warm air from the equator, thus creating areas of weather and helping the development of low and high pressure areas. In this video we're going to concentrate on jet streams in the Northern Hemisphere. Jet streams occur in the area where temperature changes are at their maximum and there are three main jet streams. These are the polar jet which travels west to east at about 30 to 35,000 feet and the winds within it are generally stronger in the winter months. The polar jet drives areas of low pressure across the Atlantic and it's closely connected to surface high and low pressure areas. Next is the subtropical jet which occurs at around 20 to 30 degrees north and is strongest once again in the winter months. It's higher than the polar jet at about 40,000 feet and it actually has little effect on surface weather systems. And finally there's the equatorial easterly jet. This occurs between the equator and about 20 degrees north and is strongest between the Philippines and West Africa. It occurs at very high altitudes near 40 to 45,000 feet and is partly responsible for driving tropical storms across the Atlantic, these eventually turning into hurricanes. There are some minor jet streams too but we won't go into these here. The actual height of the jet stream varies on a day-to-day -day basis, as does its strength. The ribbon of winds speed up and slow down, and they may even break in places. It's this speeding up and slowing down which forms areas of high and low pressure in the more northern latitudes. Meteorologists look for these as development zones. Now let's look at how the position of the jet stream affects the weather through the British Isles and Europe. If the jet stream is north of the country then we are said to be on the warm side of the jet stream. This generally leads to dry, fair and mainly mild conditions. The best of any sunshine will always be across the southern parts of the country, while to the north depending on how close the jet stream is there could be more cloud and perhaps some light outbreaks of rain for northern Scotland, Orkney and Shetland. Much more unsettled conditions will be occurring across Scandinavia and the areas where the jet stream is flowing over. Good spells of sunshine are occurring through many central parts of Europe and also towards the south. It's in these conditions in the summer when the jet stream is typically further north that we find heat waves across much of Europe. So dry, fair and generally mild adequately sums up conditions when the jet stream is north of the British Isles. With the jet stream to the south of the country, we are said to be on the cool side of the jet. In these circumstances, conditions are generally cool and dry. The best of the sunshine is through northern parts of the country, but over southern parts of England and Ireland, here there may be more cloud and outbreaks of rain. This unsettled weather will extend through France and also through parts of Spain and Portugal, running through Italy and much of Central Europe. And finally, if the jet stream is over the top of us, then this is when we get the more unsettled conditions. It will be wet and windy with a risk of gales as low pressure areas are driven through the country by the jet stream. There will be lots of rain around across the UK and Ireland, this extending through the Low Countries and Germany and across many parts of Central Europe. Through the north and south of the jet stream, it will still be cloudy but it will be drier. Remember on the northern side of the jet stream it will be cold, while to the south it will be warm. So if the jet stream is changing position over the British Isles, depending on where it is, will depend on which parts of the country are in warmer conditions and which parts are in cooler conditions. So, how do you identify jet streams from a weather chart that you might see on the internet? Well, let's take this example from Weather Online first of all. And this is a 500 millibar chart. That's about 18,000 feet high in the atmosphere. Now, where the contours are closer together identifies where the jet stream is. 
In this case, the jet stream is running off the eastern coast of the United States, south of Greenland, and then another branch of the jet stream is plunging southwards to the east of the British Isles, down into the Mediterranean, and out towards Eastern Europe. In this chart from San Francisco State University, the jet stream is shown as area shaded grey. You can see one southeast of the United States and south of Greenland, with another east of the British Isles. There's another area as well of jet stream that's over northern Africa. Unfortunately, these charts aren't generally available on the television, and so you have to search the internet to find them. However, once you know the position that the jet stream is in, you can make a prediction as to what the weather is likely to be like. That completes this video. Thank you for watching.